Hello, I'm Jim Mustick. I'm delighted to be here today with Maria Bartiromo, who has written a new book, The Ten Laws of Enduring Success. Maria, welcome to the Barnes & Noble studio. Hello, Jim. Good to be here. Thank you. Um, my first question is uh, expressed by a friend of yours on Wall Street who said, um, this is the worst time to write about <laughs> success. <laughs> We're dying out here, yeah. is what he told you when he discovered the subject of this book. Uh, obviously, you disagree, and maybe you could tell us why. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's a troubled time, and I think it's the best time to write a book about success, actually, because um, people are feeling upset. They're losing their jobs. We've got a tough economy, and we need to remember uh, during the tough times that we will get through this, and uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I think it is just these times, times when you feel like you're at the bottom of the barrel, that you recognize that this is the time to strengthen, and this is the time to walk away smarter. And I think a lot of people have walked away from this recession smarter. They are adapting to a new environment, whether it be the media industry changing or the banking industry changing, so many industries changing as our economy evolves. Um, and I think it's the best time to write about success because now is the time to learn the key things that you need to know to actually thrive and have enduring success. And that's what I talk about in the book. Over the past two decades, as you've uh, grown in your career to your present roles as uh, host of Closing Bell Monday through Friday on CNBC and as host of the Wall Street Journal Report, uh, which is the most watched financial news program in America, You've seen quite a shift in the markets. In those 20 years, there's been a great bull market after 87. There's been the dot-com boom and bust, the real estate boom and bust, uh, recent events, uh, the shock to the markets and to the country of September 11th. How has that perspective contributed to your uh, identifying the ten elements of success that you write about in the book. Well, you know, it's it's true. I've I've seen a number of booms and busts. And, you know, you can criticize booms and busts and say we shouldn't have a boom bust economy, but the truth is, boom busts are actually positive in some ways because they open the door to new opportunity. You know, if you don't have a bust, you don't have an opportunity to get into a market at, at, at better uh, prices. Anyway, throughout those periods, whether it's dot com or housing or um, or oil, or so many booms and busts and crises that you mentioned, there are many elements of success that are interlinked throughout those crises. So there's self-knowledge where you, you recognize what you're good at uh, in the down times and in the better times. There is courage that you need uh, to, to uh, get through tough times. And I think a number of cycles that I've witnessed, a number of times I've recognized that adapting to those environments really um, is one of the most important things. Um, you know, Gary Kasparov, the chess champion, is one person that I spoke to uh, for the book. And he said to me, you really want to be like Darwin. You want to recognize that it's not always the smartest, the most intelligent person that survives, but the person who is able to adapt. You need to look inside and, and, and identify those skill sets that you have and recognize where those skill sets can be applied. And, and the reason I bring this up between the booms and the busts is because we get lost in this period period of euphoria during a boom, right? You know, you think that everything is going well when, when oil prices were at, you know, $147 a barrel. Goldman Sachs came out with a report saying it's going to 200 You know, it's those things. And then all of a sudden, you know, in the, in the following months, it went to $32 a, a barrel. You know, it's those times when you recognize that humility is important. Recognize that you, your feet need to be on the floor. And if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. So there are a number of crises that I've experienced just in my professional life where I can recount some of those laws of success that I've, I've tried to um, articulate in the book uh, as, as really critical in terms of enduring um, over the long term and getting through the crises and actually coming out on the other side stronger. The book is structured around the ten principles, which let me just read so we've mentioned them all. Self-knowledge, vision, initiative, courage, integrity, adaptability, humility, endurance, purpose, and resilience. And for each of these, you tell wonderful anecdotes from your own professional life and development, uh, going back to your childhood, 
and, but also through your conversations with people like Gary Gasparov, the chess champion, Jack Welsh, um, many leaders in business and in politics. So it's a very engaging way to approach these. But one thing that struck me is how, for each of these topics, you say again and again uh, how important making these qualities a habit is. That is the daily work to be, uh, have integrity, to be courageous, to have vision. Um, and instead of saying, s defining success as something that happens in the great times, you really uh, reiterate that it's a daily thing. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it's baby steps. It really is. I, I think, um, you know, if you approach becoming successful as this big one-time event and uh, sort of this turning point in your life, I think you're missing something. I think it's actually the actions, the little things that happened each day that um, continue to underline really where we're going in life. And so there are, you know, small steps that I, that I mention in the book, uh, for example, integrity you know we all know what the right thing is when faced with a dilemma in our hearts you know this is the what to do in this particular situation and it could be any number of things you know li little things in our daily lives are you know I, I put some questions out there uh, as far as congressmen putting toward people when they're going through the process uh, of, mm -hmm. of putting their whole lives out there and, and, and really being scrutinized those little things that become big things later uh, are, are really critical in terms of actually having integrity, um, adapting, we, we talked about, in terms of vision. You know, you don't necessarily need a grand plan for your life at, at, at one point in your life. You know, I mean, I, I, I recount the story of when I decided to change majors from economics to journalism in school um, in, in terms of having a vision and, and in terms of knowing self-knowledge, knowing really what I'm good at. You know, Joe Moglia was, was a, a, a coach as well as the head of a financial services firm, actually two firms. And he said to me, Maria, I know for sure one thing, I'll never be a singer. I'm just not a singer. You know, <laughs> he had real self-knowledge as far as what he's good at. And I think it's important to really know who you are. You don't want to be somebody else. You don't want to always look and try to be the next guy. You want to be authentic and be yourself. And I think throughout life, we're faced with, with uh, dilemmas and steps in our path in terms of moving forward that will demand answers in terms of, well, what is that? vision you know where do you go tomorrow where, what are you doing next week and and I think that putting things like that into place in our daily life every day um, will create the the law if you will at the end mm -hmm. of the day you don't necessarily need a huge thing you know people get afraid of oh, what am I going to do when I'm when I'm when I'm out of school what am I going to do in terms of a career change it, it doesn't have to be an enormous turning point in life. It actually is baby steps that will help you achieve great success ultimately.